Hi, David O'Dell here. We're at the World of Concrete. We have a, a short pour truck in, behind us. I'm with Mike Haddock out of Pennsylvania. He flew down here to Vegas to get in this action right here. We can collaborate a little bit, do some videos together. And uh, he came up with an idea, some questions to ask me how I got into it, and uh, some details about the business itself. So I'm gonna let him go through those, and then uh, we'll just kind of talk about the differences between what, how he operates and, and I operate. Sounds like they're just real similar, but we'll find out. Yeah, uh, I'm from Pennsylvania. They just started that license, licensing about 15 years ago. But David, you have to have a license in California. That's right, a con uh, concrete license. I have a concrete license and I have a general building license, which is uh, in California, the concrete license is a C8 and then the uh, general building is a B license. So in my area, there's no masonry license, and but they started this uh, when they, you know, you have to get a permit and you have to get an attorney general's thing. It costs $50 for two years, and you can't take more than one third down, little things like that. Uh, power trowels and machinery and stuff like that, do you rent them or do you like to own them? Um, the small tools that I can carry around really easy and store easily, I, I own those, like power trowels, all my hand tools, uh, concrete saws, things that'll fit in my pickup truck. But anything uh, large scale where you'd have to get a shop probably to hold or have to have a large property um, where I live, uh, it's kind of rare because I'm in a little consolidated, uh, tight fitting area. So I usually go reach out to people that um, have their own equipment in different locations and they come in as subs um, and I hire them to do a removal or trucking, things of that nature. But most of it I try to do in-house. Yeah, same thing with me. I, I have a friend who has a rental station, and I also work with a contractor who's an excavator. So if I need big trucking, uh, I'll use him. But I have a little dump trailer, and then that way I don't have to be paying for trucks and engines and inspections. It's $6 a year to license it, and that's it. Yeah, that's my, that's yeah. my philosophy as well. Keep it sweet and simple. Right. Now, getting jobs in masonry, do you branch out, or do you do for people you know? Uh, everybody I work for is normally a new customer because I really do a lot of residential so it's mostly homeowners and a homeowner job typically lasts um, maybe two weeks, three weeks max on a residential property around here and if you do it right you're probably not going to see that customer again for a long long time if you do your, you know, if you're doing the concrete or the block, whatever you're doing, if you're doing it right you'll never see them again so you won't be working at that property again so you got to get another new customer. And that's where social media and reviews and things like that really come into play. All right. Uh, do you turn job? I work for mostly people I know all the time because I stay in my own town. Uh, but do you ever turn a job down? Uh, not really. No, I don't really say that I would turn them down, but I do uh, pick and choose what jobs I do want to do. Um, it depends really how busy I am. Um, there's some jobs that if I'm not busy and I haven't been busy for a while, I'll take that I normally wouldn't take. So uh, it just really depends on um, a lot of situations, um, like uh, if I'm gonna take a job or not, where it's located. Um, I like to try to stay close so I don't have to, because the traffic is really uh, bad where I live. So the further you go, the more time you're gonna be on the highways and uh, that's never much fun. So time is money. Yeah, I, uh, I mostly I mostly stay in my area too. I don't want to go far. People call me from way out of town. They, I don't know the inspectors or anything. I don't want to deal with them. So I stay stay in my local town. Yeah. Uh, do you ever recommend somebody else? <laughs> um, you know, I would like to recommend people, but inevitably, what happens is uh, if something goes wrong, you recommend somebody. What if they don't show up? What if something happens on the job? It's gonna come back on you and. Uh, with social media the way it is today, uh, that could go uh, on, on on a review that, oh yeah, this guy recommended so-and-so and he was a complete flake or whatever. So I try not to really recommend anybody. Um, I just say, well, you know what, uh, just go on Yelp or go on one of the other uh, you know places that refer contractors and read the reviews and check out their work and then hire them and then, you know, go for it. Yeah, well, I, I recommend you, all right? <laughs> all right, thanks, Mike. Yeah, if, right. I, if someone called me from Pennsylvania, I'd say, hey, yeah, I do know a guy over there. Oh, no, no, don't tell them that. <laughs> all right, do you, you ever work under general contractors? 
Uh, I truly try not to. Uh, that's, uh, I usually like to work directly with uh, the owner because this way I cut out the middle end and possible mistakes that might be made. This way I can deal direct and I know um, what it's gonna take. And I've been doing it so long, I don't need another person being involved that you know is gonna make my job wrong. So I, always, I just wanna do it right the first time and I have someone interjecting other theories that probably aren't gonna work for me or anybody else. Right. Now you, you work in California, you got earthquakes, you got mudslides, I got frost. You pour your concrete, it's usually in bigger slabs, and you use a 3,000 pound mix, which is a little more expandable, I'd say? It's just, a, it's a, well, the, um, the normal mix design, which everyone uses around here for residential, you know, non-bearing, it's just traffic, light traffic and foot traffic, is a 2,500 PSI. I like to go with the 3,000 because it's just a better mix to work. I mean, it's not necessarily gonna be any better, really, for the overall lifetime of the job, but it's a better mix to place and finish. Yeah, see, when, in my area, because of the snow and the ice and the, the rain and the temperature up and down, I pour smaller slabs and I pour them cut up more because the frost heaves everything up in the winter. Another thing is drains. Like, I try to stay away from drains because what happens is in the fall, all the leaves will fall down and block the drain up and then freezes and you get a swimming pool. And I try to stay away from steps because you got to shovel the snow and people shoveling the snow fall off the steps when they're shoveling. Different, yeah. different climate means a big... Yeah, I, yeah, when I try to stay away from steps, it's usually because maybe I want to make it like ADA compliant, you know, ADA compliant for maybe a wheelchair, or maybe somebody elderly that doesn't have to hike up steps. That's when I think of steps, but his idea is to, you know, it gets covered with snow and then all of a sudden you're falling off steps. So we got different perspectives, yeah. different areas for sure and, and one thing we always look at is where's the water gonna go right? yeah that's I do that too yeah yeah the first thing right that's first. something we definitely have in common yeah on the building end of it uh-huh now do you ever bid by the square foot or do you look at the um, job the square footage price uh, you really can't really go by square footage price because every job is unique you know, depending on the prep for removal and the, the size of the job. So the bigger the job, the lower the square footage price is going to be. But uh, every job is going to vary per square foot. So it's basically just looking at it, figuring out what you really got to do there, how much money um, is it going to cost to do it, and then, uh, you know, put uh, however much you want to make on it. That's the price. Yep. Uh, sometimes people ask me, why do I put Mike Haddock, Mason, and Consultant? Not that I go consulting anything, but they used to come around, if they see your truck there, they'd write your license plate down and send you a fine in the mail. So they'd say they'd accuse you of working there. So I'd say, oh no, I'm consulting. That's the only reason I did that. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be a lawyer anymore. Uh, they stopped doing that though. We have a different thing. So uh, I think that's it. That's most of them. Yeah. Uh, I called him up or I got in touch with him when I found out he was coming here. We talked, we got together. So. Yeah, you know another, but there's another thing I wanted to ask you about is, um, yeah. you know, when you prep to say for a driveway or a parking lot in your area and you're going to do concrete, uh, now since you have the drainage and then you have the freeze, now how do you keep the water from freezing underneath the slab and heaving it? What do you do for that? We usually put a lot of gravel. And uh, yeah. where does the water drain from the gravel? Well, what happens is when it freezes, uh, the water will hit the concrete, and if we'll get under it, the gravel's like a French drain, and the water will go away from it. So okay. as it freezes down, the water's seeping into the ground. Okay, so you, the, you had, the freeze starts at, at the top, top and, it starts, and it starts going down, and, that, and the water's draining it's out. It's draining out, and usually the, the bigger the... That's why railroad tracks, if you ever see railroad tracks, they put the gravel down, they put the thing on. That way all the water goes through it. It's a, one of the best bases in the world. In your area, you don't have the freeze. Yeah, 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 that's why, yeah, a lot of people have said, hey, why don't you put base or why do you put gravel? We don't really need to in this area because we don't have to worry about frost or freezing. Yeah. So, um, that's one reason. There's other reasons. The soil conditions are good here. Some areas uh, in the West Coast where there isn't freeze, some of the soils are bad, so you would have to put a, a base. It wouldn't be necessarily gravel. It would be most likely crushed road base, but gravel on the east because the water can drain through it. Yep. You see, sometimes they 
message me and say, well, David O'Dell doesn't do it that way. <laughs> yeah. But we're in different areas in the country, and, and we look at it different, and our experience. His father was in the business, and you grew up in it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I started yeah. working with, for my father when I was, you know, you know, I'd go out on the jobs when I was, uh, you know, 12 years old with them, and yeah. I didn't mostly mess around, or maybe clean a couple of tools, but I'd just be playing on the job, and yeah. just kept doing it, and I just kept doing more of the work, and here I am today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish okay, David, <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> All righty. We'll do it nice again. Nice to meet you. Yep.